Hey everybody, welcome to another Purple Insider Extra, and this is our new series for the offseason. What happened to that guy? We're going to break down the seasons, some inauspicious for some Vikings players, and ask what happened there to the ones who did not exactly work out for this year the way that they were expected. And Sam, I think that the perfect place to start is with Kellen Mond, where the highlight of the season for Kellen Mond was getting in the game in Green Bay and then being instantly trashed by his head coach following the game, where Mike Zimmer said he did not particularly want to see Kellen Mond play uh, over Sean Mannion in the meaningless Week 18 game, which what difference would it have made had Kellen Mond played? Mike Zimmer was getting fired anyway. But let's talk about what happened with Kellen Mond this year. When he was drafted, Rick Spielman talked about this is our backup quarterback. We see a lot of Teddy Bridgewater in him, and he gives us a cheap option to be the backup quarterback with some athletic upside and some ability to develop. But it seemed like right from the very beginning, the Vikings were not very happy with what they saw in their draft pick, even starting with minicamp and OTAs. That's a good place to start because we stood on the hill at TCO Performance Center and we watched the Vikings go through full drills with Kirk Cousins, full drills with Jake Browning, oftentimes full drills with Nate Stanley. And then they would let Kellen Mond go in for mop-up duty with the fours and get one or two snaps and throw maybe one pass. So from, from at that point, we're saying, well, are they not going to develop this guy? Um, and then in training camp, first impression of training camp, COVID. He gets the quarterback room sick. And he's not vaccinated. Next impression preseason games. He goes 28 of 51 in the preseason. So about a 50% passer, no touchdowns, one pick, very flustered, very overwhelmed against third string, fourth string guys. So the impressions early were always bad. And again, not sure how well they did at developing this guy when Jake Browning and Nate Stanley were taking snaps in front of him, when clearly you've got more invested in the third round pick, like that person should be your priority. Um, so Mon didn't look good in his play. The coaching staff didn't look great in their development. Rick Spielman didn't look great for the evaluation. And it seemed like that never improved. Now, we stopped getting glimpses in practice when they cut off practice to the media during the regular season. But from the sounds of it, there just wasn't a lot of development there. Nobody had really complimentary things to say other than, you know, he works hard or he's, he's there early. Um, but there just wasn't a lot to go on. And it doesn't seem like his development was really prioritized, especially when they bring in Sean Mannion as the backup. So there was never any foundation laid for Kellen Mond. It was bad at the start and it was bad at the finish. Right. With Jake Browning taking over the twos for the entirety of training camp, that was a major red flag because we all knew what Jake Browning is, that he's basically a practice squad level quarterback that can operate and practice. But we saw as soon as Browning got in the games, it went sideways pretty fast. And yet, even by the last preseason game, they still were not giving precedent to Kellen Mond ahead of Jake Browning, which for development purposes, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you already know at that point that Jake Browning is not going to be your backup quarterback, getting Kellen Mond a little more action would have made sense. But instead, uh, they had Kellen Mond mostly in mop-up duty. However, uh, it's hard to say that he's victimized because in mop-up duty, we had seen in years past Kyle Sloter just dominate and uh, excite the fan base with his preseason fourth quarter comebacks and running around and making plays and things like that a better athlete in Kellen Mond and a, and a better prospect in Kellen Mond wasn't able to show even signs of being a competent quarterback when he got his opportunities. And we watched him on a daily basis in practice. It was oftentimes looking around very unsure of himself, uh, not so accurate with his passing. And that was the thing that stuck out to me right away in those early practices was even during warmups, it just wasn't as sharp as you expect NFL quarterbacks. And I think the question is sort of can go one of two ways is, well, is there reason to still think that he could be their backup in the future and develop long term? And also, if not, then what did they miss during the draft process? Yeah, I mean, the the Texas A&M resume was not all that impressive. And I'm the last person who should probably try to break down quarterback mechanics, but it just doesn't look right. It's, it's a very short throwing motion, kind of a flick, and we would watch him 
against no defense, try to hit, you know, a target on a net from like 20 yards away. And even that was a struggle sometimes. So it it all just looks off to me. And he had a lot of time at Texas A&M to, to try to get this right and get better. Um, and it just doesn't seem to be pro ready yet. I don't know if you can count on that person to be your backup. Um, if you couldn't by week 17 of his rookie year, hard to imagine there being a gigantic leap going into year two. Um, maybe there's a lot of work he can do in the off season. That's when a lot of the development occurs. So I think that's kind of what you're counting on. And I think you can at least have him compete for it next year, but it probably means you have someone that he's competing with another veteran, someone cheap, um, to work behind whoever your starting quarterback is. We're not even sure who that's going to be. But I think this is kind of along the theme, and we'll probably get to a few of these guys in our series here. What happened to the third-round picks? I mean, this is kind of the story all the way down the line. And this is an early third-round pick, too. This is a 66th sixth pick almost in the second round that uh, you seem to have whiffed on. Yeah, I think that the idea of taking a third round quarterback and hoping that they can someday develop into a starting quarterback is just flawed from the very start. If you want a quarterback, you have to trade up for Justin Fields or you have to select Mac Jones because those are the first round talents that the NFL may not be perfect in terms of getting all of the quarterbacks right, but they usually don't just forget about someone. There are a couple of historical examples like Russell Wilson or Dak Prescott or Tom Brady. But when you look at the majority of the third round picks, we're talking about a very small percentage working out to be a starting quarterback. But I think that they had hoped he could at very least be a backup quarterback. And we've seen that role be very valuable really throughout all of Vikings history, right? <laughs> Whether it's Randall Cunningham or Case Keenum. And at this moment, especially having not gotten any look at him at the end of the year, uh, they have to go out and they have to spend to have a competent backup quarterback because that can be important throughout a season because we just weren't even given an opportunity to see him at the end of the year. And I think that that's where they did miss a chance future wise, or maybe they should have moved on from Mike Zimmer after the Packers game. So whoever was the interim coach could just play Kellen Mond just to see what it looked like. Maybe your whole evaluation isn't that one game playing against the Chicago Bears, but you get a feel for where he stands. And can you slot him into the number two and bring in someone to compete with him? Or do you need absolutely a number two and not be left scrambling at the very end of the year to get Sean Mannion? But I think that when you go back to just what the reality of the league is, if every team looks at a quarterback and every team says, mm, this is not really a starting prospect, they're probably right. And I'm sure that Mike Zimmer's evaluation of him as a rookie based on practices is right, that he was not ready in the same way of Sean Mannion of knowing the offense and knowing the details, but to not have an, even gotten an extra look at him after a year of developing in practice, I think was a miss for them. It's not a catastrophic miss, but I think it was a miss. Yeah, you, you could have had two games in the regular season if you play him against Green Bay and then Chicago to have, you know, a decent sample size to judge him upon. And instead, you've got basically nothing in the regular season and really not a lot meaningful in the preseason either. I mean, the, the preseason, I guess, told you that he wasn't good, but you didn't challenge him against the number twos either. So that, that tells me that he was pretty far away at the start, and it's amazing how little they trusted him at the end as well. Well, we'll have to see where he slots in and what they decide to do with the backup quarterback when a new regime comes in and gives their opinions on Kellen Mond. Keep an eye out for more videos just like this one in our What Happened to That Guy series, looking at some of the Vikings players that didn't get much opportunity or didn't rise to the challenge in 2021. We'll catch you next time.